This is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Good afternoon and happy Labor Day. I'm Don Brennan in for Scott Dennis today. Thank you for joining us and topping our news this afternoon. Bradenton residents now dealing with the mess left behind from top tropical storm Hermine flooding their homes, yards, leaving residents of Wares Creek frustrated and with questions about how to file a claim. ABC 7's Rebecca Vargas joins us now with some tips. Yeah, Don, this holiday weekend, residents are cleaning up and surveying the damage. For many, this is the first time they need to file a flood insurance claim. Wares Creek residents saw over three feet of floodwaters destroying yards and pouring into even some residents' homes. They're now cleaning up all of the debris washed up onto their yards, picking up their destroyed hurricane-proof fences, while others are pumping the water out of their homes. One resident says in her 18 years at this home, she's not filed a claim, but has been paying for the entire square footage of her home. Now the insurance appraiser says the part that received flooding may not be covered. It's considered living sp space according to my flood insurance. I have to pay for the whole living space. But the guy said because it's considered subgrade that um, I don't, that it's basement and it will only be covered as a basement area. It's a shame because this wasn't supposed to happen. When we moved here two years ago, we were told that this creek was going to be dredged and all cleared out and all this junk out of it. But you can see the piles of debris that have come down the creek and piled up against the fence. So it's going to be a massive job. We do have some tips on how to best file your flood insurance claim. Florida's chief financial officer and insurance commissioner say to locate all applicable insurance policies. This may include a homeowner's policy and a flood policy. Document all damaged property and belongings by taking photos or shooting video footage before attempting any temporary repairs. Contact your insurance company or insurance agent as soon as possible to report the damages. It is important to act quickly and cover damaged areas that may be exposed exposed to the elements to prevent any further damage and do not get rid of any damaged property so that it can be assessed. Don, back to you. Thank you, Rebecca. Now, other neighborhoods in Manatee County are also recovering from the impact of Tropical Storm Hermine. The storm left several neighborhoods and streets underwater. At Burgundy Condominiums in Bradenton, the pile of water soaked furniture and it continues to grow. Some residents say it's a reminder to always be prepared. I always recommend that for people that live in areas that they know might flood. Keep all your valuables in Rubbermaid tubs. Keep them up. Uh, just make sure, you know, when you get the rain coming, be aware of the flood water, how it's coming and how fast it is. Manatee County Emergency Management is now beginning to assess all the damage. If that damage exceeds $1.3 million, then the county may qualify for FEMA funding. And the recent rainfall is causing a traffic nightmare on Clark Road in Sarasota as two holes have formed on the road, causing officials to close it while repairs get underway. The damage is located east of the Mayaka River State Park and west of Seidel Road in Arcadia. The rain caused a washout, leading to erosion beneath the asphalt. A six-foot hole has formed on the north side of the east shoulder on State Road 72, while another six-foot hole was found under the westbound lane. Sarasota County is working with nearby DeSoto County to ensure emergency response times for residents east of the closures will not be affected. FDOT says the road could be back open as early as Wednesday, and they've set up a detour for drivers heading west on Clark. Drivers are being directed to take Seidel Road North to Sugar Bowl Road, then connect to I-75 South using State Road 70. Lido Beach also showing the effects of the storm as the shoreline already shrinking, but when Hermine hit, it only intensified the problem. As the shoreline erodes, it's adding urgency to the debate of dredging Big Pass Shoal. Now, the city of Sarasota, along with the Army Corps of Engineers, plans to use the sand between Lido Key and Siesta Key to build an 80-foot berm to protect Lido Beach. Some residents are really concerned that it will have a negative impact on Siesta Key, but the city's engineer says dredging is necessary and increasingly urgent. We know that we're getting more storms, more severe storms at least, and so providing a way to protect our shoreline, both in our structures, our roadway, but also our habitats for the turtles and the birds, gets to be more and more important as these storms get to be more severe. The city will assess the damage from Tropical Storm Hermine and figure out how to move forward with the dredging in the coming weeks. All right, John, well, what we're worried about is the day off today. How yeah. is it going to be for people going to the beach with yeah. the day off from work, what they're going to do? 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think that we'll see a little bit more rainfall around today, and that's probably one of the things we don't need. You know, you look at some of the rainfall totals that came along with this storm, and they're really very impressive. I mean, in parts of central Florida, they took rainfall deficits and uh, have changed the year-to-date rainfall numbers to 15, 18 inches above average. Wow. Yeah, so tremendous amounts of rainfall. So what I wonder is, you know, when we get into some of the drier months like, uh, you know, November, particularly December, January, February, uh, and the water tables start to drop, or are we going to see more of this sinkhole activity in central oh, yeah. Florida? You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case, it, especially in those areas north of us that are more prone to, to larger sinkholes. So, anyway. To your question, <laughs> I'd like the answer anyway. <laughs> today, uh, today I think we're, pro we're probably going to see some of the thunderstorms around. You know, we had the start of the morning off with a little bit of low-hanging clouds. That's pretty much mixed away, and the day looks beautiful outside. You know, we had a lot of sunshine out there, a few fair weather clouds beginning to build. I think as we head into the afternoon, though, the kind of leftover troughiness, you kind of see it sinking south just a little bit. It's sort of the wake leftover from Hermine. Well, that combined with a little daytime heating will take what is right now a pretty quiet radar and take some of the showery activity that we have over on the other coast, sling it back in this direction and potentially create some good thunderstorm activity along the coastline this evening prior to sunset. Now, that could be a, you know, a problem on this very busy beach-going day. Uh, we certainly want everybody to pay attention to the lightning safety tips, which <laughs> basically there's only one. If you can hear thunder, you need to be inside. 30% uh, chance of showers, I'll put it by about 2 p.m. But really, it's this evening when those showers start to build in inland areas and then gradually drift to the coastline that we have a solid 50% chance of shower and thunderstorm activity. After a daytime high that comes in pretty average, low 90s, something like that. Yesterday we hit 91. Be about there again today. We'll have the complete forecast for you coming up in a few, Don. Thank you, John. Now, veterans and community members are paying their respects to those who gave their lives in the Vietnam War. And it's about time because those who served in Vietnam were vilified when they did return. Now, the Southwest Florida Vietnam Memorial Wall is officially open for viewing. The memorial honors more than 58,000. And I came to find his name and I found it. I, I'm just proud to be here. Officials say the project began two and a half years ago, and besides a few finishing touches, the work is complete. In honor of Labor Day today, most Sarasota and Manatee County government offices are closed due to the holiday. County libraries and recreation centers are included in those closures. MCAT and SCAT services also not running today. Trash collection will be delayed by one day for the remainder of the week. However, all county parks and beaches that are normally open on Mondays will remain open so you can enjoy your day off. Meanwhile, AAA and Budweiser want to make sure you party responsibly this Labor Day. Toe to go will be running through 6 a.m. tomorrow if you have too much to drink and need a ride home for you and your car. The service is offered to everyone, even if you're not a member of AAA. The main deal is do not drink and drive, and they're trying to ensure that you don't. If you need a ride home, just call 855-2-TOW-TO-GO. Time now to head over to the kitchen and check in with ABC 7's culinary director, Judy Gallagher, to see what she's cooking for the holiday. Judy? Well, it happens every year, and we're back to that time where we're getting ready for football season. There's lots of tailgate parties, lots of watch parties, so I like to be creative. Yep, we have tacos, and we have different things like that in chili, but today I'm showing you a rice bowl made with a marinated skirt steak and some marinated chicken thighs. And basically, everybody can just come up to the counter, start with the basics in the rice bowl, help themselves. If they prefer not to have the rice, they can make it into a lettuce wrap, or I'll even show you where I got these awesome taco holders. So throughout the course of the next hour, we are going to get ready for a lot of great flavor with simple ingredients like garlic and soy sauce and a little brown sugar. I'm going to even show you easier ways if you don't want to chop your vegetables, but you're going to enjoy the game even more so. You're going to enjoy today's lunch, a nice rice bowl. We'll be back in just a few minutes to show you how. What does it mean when New South Window says Factory Direct? It means we have a factory. It means we eliminate the middleman. It means you get an award-winning, energy-efficient window at Factory Direct prices. Plus, New South Windows are made in Florida. Ford, Florida home. By Florida workers, because we know Florida weather. Bring your measurements this Saturday from 9 to 4 to get huge discounts. 
New South Window. We manufacture, we install, we guarantee. Call now. Get ready, college football fans. When you buy a $5 or more Fantasy Five ticket and enter your team's drawing, you could win great prizes like team merchandise, tickets to your team's games, and other bowl game experiences. You could even win a championship weekend prize pack in Tampa or $10,000 cash. Fantasy Five from the Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. It's Lincoln Summer Sales Event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKZ for only $299 per month or a 2016 Lincoln MKX, Lincoln's premium sports utility vehicle for $339 per month. We also have a great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. Drive with the confidence of a six-year, 100,000-mile comprehensive warranty and complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, family owned and operated and winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award. We are located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US 41. Attention breast cancer survivors. If you experience permanent hair loss or baldness after chemotherapy, you may qualify for a cash award. Thousands of women suffering breast cancer were given a chemotherapy drug without being warned about the possibility of irreversible alopecia. If you or a loved one suffered permanent hair loss after chemotherapy, call 888-622-8732. Time to file a claim is limited. 888-622-8732. That's 888-622-8732. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. Now, the official Suncoast weather with ABC 7 meteorologist John Scalzi. So we're looking at an air temperature currently that's hovering pretty close to the 90 degree mark a lot of places and we'll probably crack that. Yesterday we hit 91 and I think that's about where we'll end up again today. 73 degree dew point. East wind, that, that's kind of important to the forecast, that easterly component to the wind. East, southeast now at about 7. We'll take the showers and thunderstorms that build on the other coast and sling them right back in this direction. 86 degrees, Mayaka, 84, Wachula, 87 in Arcadia, Northport, Punta Gorda, Inglewood, 86 Lakewood Ranch, 85 Parish, 86 in Bradenton, we got 89 in Sarasota, 88 in Venice, 83 Longboat Key. What we'll see today is a couple of factors working in the forecast to kind of up the rain chances just a little bit. I know it's a big holiday weekend, a lot of people boating, a lot of people at the beaches, but there are going to be some showers around, and it's really important on these kinds of days that uh, we all remember those lightning safety tips. There have been deaths and injuries in the state of Florida this year due to lightning strikes, and we certainly don't want that to be the case today, especially as the density at the beaches and uh, out on boats are are higher and fishing and golf are the two places where most people die from lightning strikes. So we're watching this trough of low pressure located just to the north, kind of sinking southward. That is what's left over. It's kind of like the wake from a boat. I like to I, I, I like to use that analogy. The wake from a boat of Hermine as it came through, it's just kind of left this little this little area of unsettled weather in the atmosphere that sinks south, moves over top of us. So that's ingredient number one in the thunderstorm mix. Uh, then you add on the heat of the day, you know, and the general easterly wind flow. And, and although we don't have much going on right now, there are already showers starting to form along the other coast. And those will be marching right across the coast with time. Eventually, they'll get to our neck of the woods. And uh, some computer models suggest some of them could be fairly strong a little bit later on today as we develop that kind of easterly flow. You can, you can kind of make out on this depiction the showers and thunderstorms that wrap up right around our post-tropical low Harmin. And uh, most all computer models, uh, the good ones, indicate that it's time has come. We are looking at a storm system that within the next three days or so, four days will fall apart out in the cooler open waters of the Labrador current. High pressure sinks south and kind of replaces its impact, brings us this easterly wind flow, draws down some drier air, and I'd be surprised if we see any showers tomorrow. 
because of that drier air at mid and upper levels of our atmosphere. That's uh, really going to flip the switch on the rain machine. And then that kind of low chance for showers is going to exist for several days in a row before we slowly bring back the moisture and start to increase our rain chances a little bit. I don't think it'll be till next week, though, that we'll be able to equal the rain chance opportunity that we have today later in the afternoon. So a few showers inland will start to drift back toward the coast. Uh, if you're outside today around 3, 4, 5 o'clock, you'll be able to see those showers. The skies start to gray east of you and then those showers get closer and closer to the coastline. Drier air moves in tomorrow. We have this kind of mix of sun and clouds, very clear outline of that trough of low pressure. The drier air indicated here by the tan contours arriving tomorrow is really going to make for a lovely day. I, I, I kind of wish tomorrow's weather was today, but you know, it's not how weather works. You take a look at the rainfall future forecast, you'll see some of those showers over on the other coast marching in this direction, some of them strong, some showing some lightning pops, and then marching out into Gulf waters where they dissipate tomorrow. Few scattered showers around, maybe. I think this model might even overdo it just a little bit. And then on Wednesday, we'll be back to average. Uh, we'll review the tropics for you coming up in the next half hour, but east to northeast winds over the course of the next 24 hours bring us two foot seas and a light chop. And the forecast calls for, in the seven days ahead, a little rain chance for a couple of days in a row, and then we start to bounce back our rain chances just a little bit, mostly in inland areas, I think, Friday and Saturday. Uh, daytime high temperatures around the 90 mark. Back to you, Donnie. Thank you, John. Now, does your headache or joint pain increase with changes in the weather? ABC 7's Alex Redmond tells us there are reasons you may be experiencing these symptoms. Suncoast weather looks like this most of the time. But when we do have frequent changes in barometric pressure, as the fronts move in and out, what that can do is trigger differences in people's bodies. And the pain is almost gone, but it's still there when the weather is damp and rainy. If the aches and pains in your body and joints seems to happen when the weather gets like this. Because it happens when the weather is damp the way it is now. Or if you start to get a migraine when the winds are whipping and the weather is damp, it may not just be all in your head. Because people are affected by light, light goes through our eyes and affects primarily the pineal gland. And when weather changes occur, you know, we have many patients who suffer from different types of headaches and migraines. Weather can also trigger ophthalmic migraines, explains Dr. Scott Hahn. Migraines that may not be accompanied by a headache. But their eyes will have symptoms. They'll have the auras, uh, they'll see lights, they can see colored lights, they can see lightning bolts. They can even have something called scotoma, says Dr. Hahn, where parts of their vision can go missing. It's a harmless condition. It is associated with, uh, we think, maybe blood vessels that spasm may be triggered by the decreased barometric pressure. Weather can cause discomfort, but the area of the pain, says Dr. Pecorero, isn't always the source of the pain. People oftentimes think it's the bones that ache. It's not really the bones. What it is, is it's the fluid in the joints that's being affected. That pressure, says Dr. Pecorero, puts pressure in those joints. And oftentimes, some of the elderly, people with arthritis, people who are highly sensitive to headaches, can feel those changes before we actually see the weatherman bring that information to us. For ABC7, I'm Alex Redmond, your Suncoast News. Now, a new nonprofit group is allowing low income residents in Sarasota to continue to receive primary care. According to the Herald Tribune, the Community Health Centers of Sarasota County will take over responsibility for the primary care services of 26,000 residents by the end of next year. As a nonprofit, the center qualifies for federal grants and can accept donations. They will also be able to expand services as needed. The center will offer services like pediatrics, obstetrics, disease management, and primary care. Currently, the county is responsible for primary care for low-income residents, but it has been ordered by the state to stop providing those health services. If you think antibacterial soap is better than regular soap, well, think again. The FDA has found no scientific evidence that antibacterial soap is any better than regular soap. In a new ruling, the FDA is banning the marketing of antibacterial soaps and body washes that use ingredients that have not been proven to be safe or effective for long-term daily use. Going under the knife can be a scary experience for anyone, but a new research shows there are simple ways to reduce anxiety in children who need surgery. 
A small study by French researchers looked at 112 children between 4 and 10 years old. The kids were randomly assigned to either take a sedative or play with an iPad 20 minutes before receiving anesthesia. Researchers found the iPads work just as well to reduce stress as a medication. Now the devices apparently help to relax the kids' parents as well. Coming up, you may have heard the old joke about going to a hockey game when a fight broke out. Well, that happened at a Suncoast High School football game the other night, and we'll show you what exactly happened coming up. Hurricane season is here, so when severe weather threatens, count on the official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We bring you storm warnings faster and with more detail than ever before. And track storms right down to your neighborhood. On air, online, and on your mobile device, turn to the official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free. Services.com. This is a special health alert for seniors suffering with joint pain. If you have Medicare insurance, you may qualify for high quality support braces at little or no cost. I'm thrilled with my knee braces. Now, there is a simple and proven solution for seniors to get out of pain with state of the art support braces. I barely feel any pain at all. Braces for your knees and back, as well as your shoulders and ankles, too. I'm so happy with the quality of these braces. Call now, and you could qualify for a pain-relieving brace at little or no cost. I can play ball again, and it doesn't hurt. And because of my Medicare coverage, it costs me next to nothing. So call now. And because I have this red, white, and blue Medicare card, my braces have cost me just about nothing. It's true. You may get a knee, back, shoulder, and ankle brace at little or no cost. They qualified me for two knee braces and a back brace. If you have knee or back pain, give them a call. They can help. 1-800-476-8967. 1-800-476-8967. You only have one life. Are you gambling with it? One in three adults have high blood pressure. Not knowing your numbers could cause you to lose big time. Luckily, you can turn the odds in your favor by getting your blood pressure checked today. Don't leave your health to chance. Learn more at heart.org slash HPB. Uh, they, they care. They, they take the time to understand you, take the time to understand your case. There's no better satisfaction to me than to see a client who is happy because of the job we've done for them. It's really actually very comforting to know that there's someone that you've heard of and you're getting recommendations about that you can turn to when you have a problem. I felt like I had a partner in this and uh, he was going to be by my side. Welcome back. And most high school football games were washed away by the storm Friday night here on the Sun Coast. Unfortunately, one of the few that was played probably shouldn't have been. Booker and Sarasota did play, but it got ugly early. A first quarter bench clearing brawl led to seven ejections and maybe more penalties once the FHSAA takes a look into it. Sarasota got off to a big start and never looked back, but the frustration boiled over from the outset. It took every coach and official to keep it from getting worse. And it looks like it could have gotten much worse, as bad as it was. Now, thankfully, it, it didn't, but this may not be the end of it. ABC7 will keep you posted on any punishment that is handed down, if there is any in the future. Now, it's ironic the Hurricanes game had to be canceled by a tropical storm, but the Manatee-Palmetto game is such a huge rivalry game that they have to play it. It needs to be played. Crowds will be crazy. So the game will be made up tonight at 6 at Hawkins Field, Manatee against Palmetto. Manatee won by the skin of their teeth last year where Palmetto had victory, but let it slip away. And the game is always entertaining, and we will have scores and the highlights for you tonight. U.S. soccer star Megan Rapino knelt during the national anthem Sunday night before the Seattle Reigns 2-2 tie with the Chicago Red Sox in the Women's Professional Soccer League. Now, Rapino tweeted after the game, 
it's the least I can do to keep the conversation going. She was basically aligning herself with San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Ka Kaepernick to keep that conversation going. Kaepernick got the ball rolling when he sat during the anthem two weeks ago. Then after a chat with a former Army Green Beret, he knelt so as not to disrespect those who have served in the armed forces in our country before the national or during the national anthem. Now, Rapino helped the U.S. win the World Cup last year and played in the Rio Olympics, but the kneeling was about oppression. Now to the announcement rocking the world of NASCAR. The series' most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr., or Little E, sitting out the rest of the season for health reasons. ABC's T.J. Holmes has the latest on what Jr. has to say about his condition and what it means for his career. I think it's the right decision considering how I feel. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the most popular driver in NASCAR, says he's not fit to drive. I definitely don't belong in a race car today uh, by any stretch of my imagination. And won't return to racing this year because of complications from a concussion he suffered in this crash. And Dale Jr. is the ABA. Crossing from traffic. Hold the break here, man. At the Michigan Speedway back in June. Earnhardt says he didn't feel any symptoms until weeks after the crash. He hasn't been seen behind the wheel since July 9th as he's continued a slow and difficult recovery. I struggled with uh, my eyes for a while and I'm starting to see improvements there. My balance is um, miles better than it was. This comes on the heels of his announcement that he's donating his brain to concussion research. In response to a Sports Illustrated story about NFL players doing the same, Earnhardt tweeted in March, what use is it to you at that point? I'm going to donate mine. Earnhardt has suffered several concussions in his career, including two in 2012. The first during a test drive in Kansas where he blew a tire and slammed the wall. Then just two months later, spinning out of control in a chain reaction crash during a race at the Talladega Super Speedway. Now let's head back over to the kitchen to see how lunch has come along with ABC7 Culinary Director Judy Gallagher. Welcome back. I'm going to show you one of the easiest marinades I know. Now what I do is if I'm using skirt steak, any other type of steak, I'm going to make this into a paste and put it in the food processor. But if you're just using chicken or shrimp, you can just make this marinade without having to make it into a paste. The reason why I don't like to use it as a liquid marinade for the skirt steak, it can actually, believe it or not, make it tough. And skirt steak in general is a tough piece of meat, so we're going to soften it up. I've added two cloves of garlic, minced, and now I'm gonna add about a third of a cup of fresh squeezed lime. Roll your lime on the counter and use them at room temperature to get that fresh ingredient, okay? That real fresh citrus flavor. And we're gonna add about three tablespoons of brown sugar. And yes, you can use a sugar substitute if you need to. So we're gonna go ahead and stir that around. And then we're gonna add to this just about Oh, less than a half a cup of olive oil. And that becomes a marinade. And like I said, if you, if you need to, you can put it in to make a paste for the steak. So I have both. And last is scallions. So that part is already done. Take our boneless chicken thighs, put it in the marinade for up to four hours. Now, with skirt steak, you don't want to marinate it that much. So let me show you what I do. I take my skirt steak, picked it up over at the Fresh Market, and it comes in long strips. So I cut that in half and I get the Ziploc bag ready. I will rub the paste on it and let that sit for about an hour. Half an hour in the refrigerator, turn it, and then let it sit on the counter so it comes up to temperature. But you can see we already have some that they've already grilled. You can grill it outside or put it under the broiler. Skirt steak, you really don't want to pan sear. Now next what I have is I picked up some pre-cut onions and peppers because you know what, I want to watch the game too. So this makes it really simple. And I'm just sauteing that ever so slightly. Now as it starts to brown, just a teeny bit of lime. I don't want that to flare up. By all means, if you want to add some soy sauce to that, you can. But what I'm gonna do is I have some cooked rice over here. Now my stove, is broken, yes, a chef stove breaks at home. So I had to microwave the rice, super easy. I'll only use my rice cooker or the microwave in the future, but I have the first component to here. So while I get the cilantro ready for another component, I'm gonna check on my chicken that's already broiling in the oven here, and then I'll be back to show you how many varieties of one dish I can get out of this awesome marinade. 
I'll be back in just a few moments. I don't know your spokesperson. This is an important message for anyone who took the prescription drug Xarelto or Prodaxa and had a serious bleeding event. If you or a loved one took Xarelto or Prodaxa and suffered from a serious bleeding event, call 800-220-8268 immediately. Xarelto and Prodaxa have been linked to serious internal bleeding, stroke, and death. Call 800-220-8268 immediately. You may be entitled to compensation. Call now for a free consultation. Hi, I'm Dylan Radigan. The world is brimming with possibilities, and that keeps me busy. My latest invention may be able to feed and sustain communities around the world. My team and I are always on the go, meeting new people and seeing new places. I produce films that I really care about. It's an honor to speak to audiences around the world. When people come together, meaningful work gets done. How do I do all this? Well, that part's easy. Hotelplanner.com. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Really? They found me a place for what she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe, and they just helped every step of the way, and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. Call right now to get your free Senior Care Compass eBook. Find out about the five best kept secrets on financing senior care and assisted living. Call now, 800-290-0352. 800-290-0352. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Live from our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Sun Coast News. We're here for you. Welcome back. I'm Don Brennan and for Scott Dennis today. And topping our news this half hour, good news and bad news in the aftermath of Tropical Storm Hermine. The northern parts of the East Coast are dodging a direct hit as the storm is moving out to sea, but it is leaving some dangerous issues on a popular beach on this day, now ruining holiday plans for millions. ABC's Elizabeth Herr is in Atlantic City with more. Beneath the powerful waves and the surging surf, dangerous recurrence, the work of now post-tropical cyclone Hermine. Rolling up the eastern seaboard with winds gusting up to 70 miles per hour, the threat closing many beaches throughout Labor Day weekend. We're not expecting huge crowds at the beach, um, but we're probably going to have a lot of guards down by the jetty with the rip currents. Out in the Atlantic, rough waters even rocking passengers aboard the Royal Caribbean's Anthem of the Seas, bound for Bermuda. Eating in the restaurant, dishes going all over the place. Down south, cleanup continuing. We lost the deck. And residents still battling rising waters where Hermine first made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane early Friday. I look out my window and we have an ocean on our front porch. Flooding neighborhood after neighborhood from Florida to Virginia, tossing trees, exploding power lines and turning deadly. Absolutely ferocious. Thousands spent the weekend in Florida without power and officials warn the danger there isn't over yet. There is a lot of water that still has to move through our county. 
And, and so we're not out of the woods yet. And officials here in Atlantic City will continue to monitor what you see right there, those waves. In fact, the officers out patrolling this area this morning told me that for as long as those rip current dangers remain in place, the ocean remains off limits to swimmers. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, Atlantic City, New Jersey. John, we're still cleaning up here and... Uh... Well, what do we have to look forward to as far? I mean, I guess what do they have to look forward to? Are there any other sh things in the tropics developing right now? Because for a while it looked yeah. like a little. Yeah, I think uh, we're I think we're going to be in a little bit of a minor lull, but certainly we have a lot of a lot of hurricane season to go through yet. Yeah. But uh, you know, for the next five six days, everything looks pretty quiet down there. You know, we have a combination of some dry air down there and uh, some relaxed wind. So I I, I think we're going to. It looks okay right now. Lots of little areas to watch, but nothing that looks like it's organized developing or has any kind of longevity to it. So oh, that's good to hear. That's all good. Uh, we have across our region, again, a, a chance of some showers, even thunderstorms today. That's really my biggest weather concern is the fact that we'll have lightning on one of the um, most popular beach going and outdoor boating days of the year. So we'll continue to watch that. Take, we showed you the, uh, the, the, the webcam the overlooking golf waters here a, a few moments ago. Now take a look at the Lakewood Ranch webcam as we put it into motion. A little bit more cloud cover around it. Off in the distance, growing in the last hour or so. You can see those scattered clouds out there. Now that's the beginning of what will eventually morph into some larger scale showers and thunderstorms. The march is on from the other coast of those scattered showers, building gradually drifting in this direction. They'll explode in inland areas and kind of drift toward the coastline as we head into the evening hours. Some of those storms could be strong, multiple lightning strikes, that sort of thing. But not everybody will see rain. About half of us will. Daytime high temperatures will be pretty much where we would expect them to be at this time of year in the low 90s or so, certainly where we've seen them all uh, summer long. Uh, we'll talk about what comes up for the remainder of the week and how it's looking coming up in just a few. Back to you, Don. Thank you, John. On to the campaign trail where Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are pitching to voters this Labor Day. The rival nominees are in the battleground state of Ohio as the campaigns enter a critical month in the race for the White House. Clinton is traveling with press in tow after criticism that she hasn't held a press conference in 275 days. Trump's campaign intensified the attacks on Clinton as she continues to deal with the fallout from the release of the FBI investigation notes on her private emails. The negatives of Trump and Clinton giving rise to third-party candidate Gary Johnson with close to 10 percent in some recent polls. What he can do is allow either candidate to lower their barrier that they need to win. So Donald Trump can underperform with minorities and still win the presidency. Hillary Clinton can underperform with white voters and still win the presidency. Both Trump and Clinton will be busy in several battleground states this month. Between the two and their surrogates, they have more than a dozen events planned with just two months left until Election Day. Now, Hillary will be making another stop in Florida this week. The Democratic presidential nominee will be in Tampa tomorrow for a public rally at the University of South Florida. Clinton is expected to discuss her plans on national safety and how she will work with our allies on national security. The rally is expected to begin at 1.45 at the USF Student Recreations Center. Doors will open at 11.45 tomorrow morning. In other national news, two more accidents on amusement park rides have sent several people to the hospital. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details. This morning, two accidents at two different local fairs, leaving a dozen people, mostly children, recovering. I really thought I was going to die. This ride at the Delta Fair in Memphis now shut down after this terrifying scene. Pure panic as the Moonraker ride malfunctions. Everybody was screaming, crying. The safety bar opening before the ride reached the ground. People left dangling, holding on for their lives, some falling from their seats. My youngest daughter is hurt bad. Sean Owen's daughter Faith has a broken wrist and neck injury. One of half a dozen children rushed to the hospital. This within hours of another fair accident in Chicago. EMS plan one for the multiple injuries at the carnival. Six children hitting their heads when a roller coaster came to an abrupt stop. Uh, one of the little girls kind of whipped forward and she hit her face on part of the ride. The total number of scares at amusement parks and carnivals now totaling six in just the last month including a 10-year-old killed on the world's largest water slide in Kansas. I've got 30 kids that have fell from the fire swell.
and three hospitalized when something went wrong on a Ferris wheel in Greenville, Tennessee. The majority of the incidents that occur on amusement rides today, whether at a fixed park or at a traveling carnival, are human error. And that appears to be the case in this most recent accident in Memphis. The ride operator panicked and hit a button that released the safety bars to, before the ride was actually in the cradle. More than two dozen people are now safely back on dry land after a scary turn events during a fishing trip. 21 passengers and five crew members were out fishing off the coast of San Diego when their boat started taking on water. A nearby commercial fishing vessel with John Rodriguez aboard and his wife and son heard the distress call first. They were only a half mile away, so they headed over to the scene. They carefully transported the stranded boarders one by one from their sinking ship before the Coast Guard arrived. One guy gave us a hug because he was very thankful and started crying and people were just so thankful we were there. The rescuers are being hailed as heroes but says they didn't do anything special. They say they were just in the right place at the right time and hope that someone else would do the same for them. In consumer news, prices at the pump have dropped to their lowest rate since 2004. The national average for a gallon of regular unleaded gas is $2.21 today. That's 20 cents cheaper than this time a year ago. The difference has led to $19 billion in savings for drivers this year. The average U.S. household is expected to pocket an extra $320 this year due to plunging gas prices, although it's gone up about 20 cents in the last two weeks. Gatorade is getting an upgrade. PepsiCo is set to release an organic version of the sports drink. It's called G Organic and it'll be sold in select markets beginning this fall. It comes in strawberry, lemon and a mixed berry flavor. G Organic only has seven ingredients including cane sugar and sea salt. Now speaking of well, beverages, let's head back to the kitchen see how Judy's doing with lunch. We are cooking up a storm in the kitchen. It's a little cluttered right now, but you'll see how it all comes together. Let's get back to our big bowl of rice. This is gonna be just so much fun for tailgating. So I'm gonna put in some chopped mango. I'm gonna stick that right over in that corner there. We have the, the skirt steak that's already been grilled up, and we're gonna cut that against the grain. And you can just see where I'm cutting. Just want to make sure that you're always going in the opposite direction. And sometimes you have to actually turn the steak to make sure that it's always against the grain. If you cut onto the grain, then what's going to happen? It's going to be chewy. And that part you don't want. So always against the grain. And that looks like enough, doesn't it? Wow, that looks really good. It's coming together beautifully. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take some shredded cheese. Remember all along that I have that simple microwaved rice on the bottom. And now I'm going to do some cheese on that. Somewhere between a Tex-Mex and an Asian style is where I'm going in the bowl. Then what I like to do is I always like to leave out fun little things for people to put in. Maybe they want some fresh spinach in it or they want some guacamole and they can certainly do that. But what I want to show you is this awesome taco holder. You're going to want to buy some of these over at Fox Restaurant Supply in Northgate. They have these. It's a restaurant supply but the prices are really great and they get things for home all the time. So people can load up two tacos. They don't want to miss part of the game during during the commercial break and then they have it. We're gonna take our marinated chicken thighs now that I just got off the grill. And again, I'm just gonna cut those into smaller pieces. There we go, oh my gosh. Now remember, the chicken thighs we just did in the straight marinade right here. And with the steak, I actually made it into a paste. So now we'll do these chicken thighs. And of course, you can always use the lettuce if you don't want to use the, the flour tortillas with the carbs or the carbs and the rice. The key is to just make it fun and let people be creative. So leave the cheese on the side, make a wasabi sauce with sour cream and a little wasabi for on top, and you just have such a flavorful game day treat. I'll be back in just a few minutes to give you a bite and talk you through it one last time. The all-new MySunCoast.com. Just another way, we're here for you. U.S. Med has great news for anyone living with diabetes. If you have Medicare, private insurance, or prescription drug coverage, U.S. Med will ship a new glucose meter right to your home. And shipping is free. 
My new meter uses only a speck of blood, so it's less painful than my previous meter. If you have Medicare, private insurance, or prescription drug coverage, you're covered with U.S. Med. We're welcoming new patients, even if your current provider can't supply you anymore. I don't even have to test on my fingers anymore. I can test on my hand or forearms, and it's more accurate than my old meter. So call U.S. Med today, and you'll have a choice of two great meters. One that actually speaks your results, or a meter so small it fits in the bottle of strips. Act now, and U.S. Med will include a free prescription discount card. We'll also send you a free diabetes cookbook. This is your opportunity. So call U.S. Med today. You'll be glad you did. Temperatures are rising, and the deals are hotter than ever during the summer clearance event at Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Get the all-new Chrysler Pacifica for just $26,999, and get an additional $1,000 off with a trade-in. Hurry! Time is running out to get the new Dodge Journey for just $15,999. And right now, get up to $10,000 off a new Ram Crew Cab. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Just because someone grows older, does that mean they have to grow apart from their friends or from the things they love to do? With Right at Home, it doesn't. Right at Home's professional team thoughtfully selects caregivers to help with personal care, housekeeping, meals, and most of all, staying engaged in life. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Are you ready to go? Oh, I sure am. We can provide the right care right at home. Current air temperature outside coming in at 89 degrees with a dew point of 73. We got a fair amount of sunshine out there and an east wind blowing at about 7. Temperatures across the region 89 Sarasota, Venice, Inglewood at 88, 88 in uh, Northport, 87 degrees in Punta Gorda. Lakewood Ranch comes in at 87, 87 degrees in Bradenton, 86 in Parrish. Uh, Longbow Key comes in at 84. Inland temperatures 85 degrees, Wachula 87, Arcadia, same thing in Mayaca City. So today we have this kind of trough of low pressure that exists across the state. It's kind of a, a leftover feature from Hermine and it continues to slowly sink southward. As it does so, it's going to help trigger off showers and thunderstorms. So I think today we have a pretty good chance of seeing showers around. This is sort of the last gasp of Hermine for us. After this is gone, any hint or, or, or any impression in our atmosphere of Hermine will be over with. Um, as this sinks southward, we trigger off a shower or two, and then that easterly wind kind of picks up on that and tends to take those showers in inland areas and push them back to the coast. Right now, everything's very quiet, but you can see the line of showers beginning to build over on the other coast along those easterly breezes there, plus the line of showers associated with the whole trough itself. The combination of those two features with daytime heating and moisture in the air will bring us our shower chances today of about 50% or better. So, Hermine's out of here, post-tropical cyclone now. Uh, it continues to influence uh, area beaches, as you saw earlier in this broadcast, or not our area beaches, but northeastern area beaches in the vicinity of the storm, uh, with some inclement weather, but it is pulling away. It's, it's impact lessening. It will continue to eventually just phase out as we head into the next uh, couple of days. High pressure will replace it as the dominant weather feature, the, the influencer of our weather over the next several days. It'll bring us that easterly wind flow. It'll draw down some drier air, and it'll keep our rain chances less than average for about three or four days in a row. That'll be the case probably through Friday anyway, and then our rain chances will start to return. High pressure, easterly wind, Mostly dry conditions during the morning hours and afternoon hours. Showers arriving later in the day today, riding on that easterly flow. So a few showers inland, drifting to the coast, and then that drier air moving in tomorrow, really suppressing the shower and thunderstorm activity around here. Mix of sun and clouds. We have that drier air indicated as tan contours on the water vapor imagery, and it is very evident sinking southward across our region. But the rainfall future cast for today does indeed show shower and thunderstorm activity. Could have multiple lightning flashes. Uh, so just be aware that if you hear the thunder, it means that you 
could be in danger of being struck by lightning and need to be in a safe place in an interior area. Or if you can't get to an interior air location, then you should be in your car. Otherwise, uh, beachgoers stay safe today with a northeast wind coming in out of the east this evening at about 10 knots, two foot seas, light chop. Not a bad day for boating, really, except when those thunderstorms arrive. Otherwise, tomorrow will be glorious. It'll be a little bit on the warm side, and then over the next several days, we'll slowly inch back our rainfall chances for the weekend. Back to you, Don. Thank you, John. Coming up, entertainment news and a last look at Judy's lunch. So stay with us. Hurricane season is here, so when severe weather threatens, count on the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We bring you storm warnings faster and with more detail than ever before. And track storms right down to your neighborhood. On air, online, and on your mobile device, turn to the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Tonight on ABC7 News at 7. Our system of security is not a one and done kind of thing. It is a living system, so we will continue to make changes and improvements to it throughout the year. Protecting Suncoast schools, we'll find out what measures the districts are using and the controversial measures that are being debated to respond to crises. I'm Alan Cohn. We'll have that story plus our roundtable discussion. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. A message from the Pulaski Law Firm. You started there right out of high school, learned your trade and did it well. And the asbestos you handled, well, that was just part of the job. If you worked in the trades and were diagnosed with mesothelioma, get the best care available, then call us. You may be entitled to financial compensation without ever going to court. Call 800-236-4994. And see how we can help. Mesothelioma, don't fight it alone. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Attention, this is an important message for anyone who had an IVC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to their heart or lungs. Did your IVC filter move, break, or cause organ damage? The FDA warns that IVC filters may cause serious complications, such as heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, even death. If you or a loved one suffered serious complications, call IVC Filter Helpline now. You may be entitled to compensation. IVC filters are designed to prevent blood clots. If your IVC filter moved or broke and you suffered heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, or if a loved one died as a result, call IVC Filter Helpline today. Our network of experienced attorneys is ready to fight for you. You'll pay nothing unless there's a recovery in your favor. Call today for a free confidential consultation. Don't fight this alone. Call IVC Filter Helpline now. Please call 800-897-6764. That is 800-897-6764. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. There we have it, a perfect game day meal. We have that marinated skirt steak. I made that paste from the simple ingredients of garlic, olive oil. I put in a little pinch of chili powder and a little pinch of Malaysian seasonings. Do what you want with it in scallions. Make a paste for the skirt steak or the liquid marinade for the chicken thighs. Either way, it's gonna be a winner. Then your choice of whether you want to use the taco holders and make some flour tortillas. I made a simple rice bowl. It has chopped mango, the marinated skirt steak, a little guacamole, some cheese on it, some sauteed onions and peppers, and definitely some bright cilantro. The juices alone 
from the meat and the chicken are gonna bring out great flavors and you really don't need to use a salad dressing. This is perfect as it is. Serve it with your favorite tortilla chip or fried wontons and you're all set to go. So I'm ready to get ready for my next sports event and I'll save some for you guys too. Thank you, Judy. And entertainment news at the box office this weekend, a horror movie once again took over. Don't Breathe took the top spot for the second week in a row, bringing in $15 million. Suicide Squad Stay Strong coming in second with $10 million. Disney's Pete's Dragon rounded out the top three, bringing in $6 million. And vintage rockers Daryl Hall and John Oates are the newest stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oates, Oates says he is an honor to be a part of the great sidewalk of fame. The duo has been turning out such classic hits as Rich Girl, Kiss on My List since the 1970s. Also, Man Eater was a big one. The two have produced 18 studio albums and six number one singles. They still continue to tour and they're set to play the Hollywood Bowl later this month. I think they're also in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They played here. Yeah, I there. believe. Yes, they did. That's right. Recently, they're pretty. They're pretty phenomenal. It kind of is the soundtrack of my young life. Growing yeah. Up. Yes. Very popular group. Uh, Judy Gallagher's husband is it's one of his favorite groups. Oh, okay. I thought he might have been a ro you know a roadie for them. <laughs> Road crew. I, he might not have turned that down in his <laughs> earlier years. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everybody.